from Kalmar, Sweden. It is Friday and me and dad have finished work for the week and we're heading on a weekend getaway to Öland, which is the second largest island in Sweden. We're going to soon cross the bridge from the mainland to the island, so let's head out there. Clap your hands and you feel strong. Airbnb. So let's check it out. So here it is. checked into our Airbnb and walked down to the beach and the harbour to see the sunset as you can see behind me here. Uh, it's so beautiful and it feels like real summer now. It's still about 24 degrees in the air and it's about 9 o'clock so yeah that's so Swedish summer for you. I'm going to end the day here and uh, we'll see you bright and early tomorrow to explore more of the island. So, good night! Good morning from Erland. It is the next day now and we are up bright and early with the sun to explore the northern part of the island. We're starting off at the King Mill or Kvarn Kungen, which you can see behind me here. And it's Scandinavia's biggest um, mill of this type. Um, and they are scattered all over Erland. And in the olden days, each farmer had its own little mill like this to mill the crops. And now they are a part of the heritage of the island. This one in particular is from 1749 and it's really grand and very beautiful. And this place is actually open, it seems, uh, most of the time during the summer. And you can take this little stair up to the mill. So let's go up there and see what we find. So here we've made it inside the mill. And you can actually go up even further. So how this thing worked was that the wind would drive the wheel around and you would have to carry the crops up to this barrel where you would pour it in. Then it would be grinded with the help from the wheel and it would fall down to the bottom where it was separated into fine flour. And here we have the wheat which is the crop that would be used to mill here. So the other mill that we saw was called the king and here we have the queen mill and it seems that you also can go inside. In the 13th century this church behind me here was one of the biggest in Sweden. Today it is a ruin but it still lies in this beautiful scenery and uh, yeah it's a part of the Swedish heritage so let's check it out. Driving about an hour up the coast, we have made it to the beach called Lycke Sound, where we're going to take a morning swim. And uh, yeah, it's a really big, long uh, beach, so hopefully there won't be a lot of people here. 
this is so nice. And we're lucky because there are not a lot of people here. We've got the beach, this part of the beach to ourselves, which is amazing. So, yeah, really, really nice. I can't believe that this is Sweden. Okay, so we're going to attempt to swim. There's currently no one swimming at the moment, but yeah, we'll see how it turns out here. Okay, it was quite cold actually, but yeah, that's Sweden for you. I just wanna go back, try to make it all up done So it didn't have to hurt this through the Troll Forest, which is a nature reserve on the northern tip of Öland. We're walking on a trail about one kilometer to a shipwreck. Uh, here uh, there's usually also a railway that goes uh, through the forest and uh, it organizes tours, um, usually uh, when it's not these times, but yeah, it's really, really beautiful, and yeah, so let's continue walking to the shipwreck. On a stormy night in December 1926, the Swix boat ran aground to the east of Trollskogen. All seven crew members survived and came ashore. The wreck now lies washed up on the Shingle Beach. is the kroppkaka or kroppkakor which essentially is a potato dumpling normally stuffed with meat and onion and spices um, luckily we've come to a place called Ninnis and they actually have a vegan version so we're going to test this out and it's usually served with cream and lingonberry jam so yeah let's try this so yeah it's the potato dumpling and then we have uh, in the vegan version it's um, mushroom and onion and then the the spices so let's see how it is and they are um, cooked these dumplings yeah it's a bit slimy but yeah it's Nice, with the, the, the lingonberry jam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On the northern tip of Öland, you will find the lighthouse called Longe Erik, or also Tall Erik. It was built in the early uh, 1800s and it's located on the a little peninsula. It's really beautiful so we're going to walk to it now and apparently you can actually walk to the top so we'll see if we can do that. Unfortunately it's locked apparently probably due to the pandemic but here we have the lighthouse. We are now at the Neptuni Åkra or Neptuni Fields and uh, yeah it's how the rocks have formed in kind of like a wave and then behind me here you see the different rocks in the sea and also the flat uh, rocks that you can see all over here so yeah they're special formation of them as you can see here. We are now at Birums Raukar, which are big rock formations uh, here by the sea. And it's taken millions of years for these to form like this. And uh, yeah, they're still standing strong. After a full day of 
of exploring northern Öland. We are finishing off the day in Färjestaden here by the beach. Hopefully you have got an insight of what you can see and do on this beautiful island in Sweden. So it's the perfect way to end the day and I'll see you next time.